Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. Excel's offset function sounds weird at first. Start at a cell, then move over a specified number of rows and columns, then select a range of rows and columns. So why bother with that extra step? Well, let's say you have a table. Starting at the upper left corner of the table as a reference, you can grab an area of rows and columns inside the table. The offset function allows you to vary the number of rows and columns to move and select, so instead of rewriting the function every time, you can vary those four inputs. Genius! In this video, I'm going to show you how it works, then I'm going to show you a special case, how you can use the offset function to dynamically change the size of a print area. So let's take a look and see how it works. In this worksheet, we want to start in the upper left corner, right there on the employee name column header. And then from that, we want to grab various parts of the data area and output it somewhere else. Let's take a look at the syntax of the offset function first. The offset function has five arguments. We say equals offset, open the parenthesis, and the first argument is the reference cell. In this example, the reference cell is the column header of the first column. The second argument is how many rows down do we want to use? Next argument is how many columns over do we want? Now, once we've done that, once we put in those second two arguments, we now have a new starting point. So then with that starting point, the next argument is how many rows tall an area do we want? Could be just one column if we want. And then the last argument is how many columns wide do we want to grab? So what I'm going to do is I have some space up here on top. Let's just maybe start over there. So I'm going to say equals offset. Notice I could just type in the first few letters and the syntax helper comes in. I'll hit the tab key. So the reference is going to be that employee name column header, comma, now, how many rows down do I want? So let's say I want to go down three rows, comma, and I don't want to go over any columns. I want to stay in the current column, so I'm going to say zero, comma, how high do I want? Well, I want a single row, so I'm going to say one, and then I want five columns, so comma, five. Close the parenthesis and enter, or control enter, and now I can see the name of the employee and the four quarters. And there is, we can see there's Martha and the numbers that we have here match the numbers that are up here. Notice that this does not take formatting. And if you want formatting, you have to go and do that additionally. Also, you'll notice this is a new type of function. This is one of the fill functions. So when I click on the cell where I typed in the formula, you see the formula looks normal. But if I click on any of the other cells, we see it's grayed out. And also we have this nice shaded border around it. Now, what if rather than outputting the info for Martha, what if I want to get the sum of those four numbers? And you could see over there. So here's Martha's row of info. And then over there at the end, we have that. So that's just going to confirm that we're doing it correctly. So what I'm going to do in this cell is I'm going to take the offset function and nest it inside the sum function. So I'm going to say equals sum, and in the parenthesis, I'm going to put an offset. So now I'm going to say, okay, we're going to start again at a six, comma, I want to go three rows down, comma, now I want to go one column across, because that's where the first quarter is, that's where the numbers start, comma, and now the height, I still want to stay on this one row, so the height is going to be one. It's going to be that one row, comma, and the width, I want to go and grab four cells to the right, four columns to the right, so I'm going to put in four. Close the offset function, parenthesis, then close the outer sum function, parenthesis, enter it, or control enter it, and you see I have 429, 125, and if I look across Yes, indeed, that is the number. 
OK, well, let's do this going down a column. I want to use the offset function to find the total of, let's say, the third quarter. So I'm just going to select and delete those so we have a little bit of space. And the third quarter, if we scroll down here, we can see there is the total, 1,881, et cetera. So again, I'll start up there. And like before, I'm going to nest offset in the sum function. So I open up the sum function. There's a parenthesis. Now I put in the offset function. And I'm always starting there in the upper left corner on a6, comma. And I want to go down one row because right now on the column headers, I want to go down one row because that's where the data starts. So I'm going to put in one, comma. Now I want to shift over to the third quarter. So I want to shift over three columns. So I'm going to say three. Now the height is 14 rows. So I'm going to comma put in 14 there for the rows, comma. And I want to stay on one column. So I'm going to say, OK, the width is one. Close the parenthesis for the offset function. Close the outer parenthesis for the sum function. Enter it or control enter it. And there we go. And we see there's that 1881, 831. And there is that number. So here's the special case. You might know the print area feature. You can select a range of the worksheet to print out if you don't want to print the entire sheet. It's a great feature, but you can have only one print area at a time. If you assign a new print area, the old one gets replaced. But we can use the offset function to redefine the print area dynamically on the fly. The secret is that when you create a print area, Excel creates a range name called print underscore area. So we wrap this range name inside the offset function and use cell references for four of its arguments. Let's go do that. So let me show you the print area feature just in case you're not familiar with it. So let's say I want to print out this entire sheet. So I'm going to just press Control-P to go to the print dialog box. And there's the entire sheet that's going to be printed out. I'll just escape out. So if I don't want to print the whole thing, maybe I just want to print part of it. I can select a few cells like that, then go to the page layout tab on the ribbon bar over where it says print area. Click that and choose set print area. I'll deselect. And you can see there's a thin line around that. So now when I go back into the print dialog box, there is that print area. And it's going to print out just that and not the entire thing. If I redefine the print area, if I say, OK, now I want the print area to be that, and I go to print area, and I set print area, you notice those lines are changed. And if I go back into print, you notice in the print preview, that's changed. So now what I'm going to do before I write any formula is I want to provide some inputs for that offset function. So what I'm going to do is, let's say over here, I'm going to put in some column headers. I'm going to say, how many rows down do I want to go? How many columns across do I want to go? And then like before, what's the height and what's the width? I'm going to say, I'm not going to go any rows down. I don't want to go any columns across, meaning I'm going to stay put in the upper left corner of that print area. Height, let's say I'm going to do six rows and width, I want to do two columns like that. So here's where the cool part comes into play. On the ribbon bar, I'm going to go to the formulas tab and there's this name manager. Now we didn't create any range names manually. Let's go into the name manager button there through this dialog box. And you see there is that range name that Excel created for us automatically, print underscore area. And this is what it's referring to is these particular cells. There is there are those cell references. It's very difficult to edit this. So I'm just going to select and delete the whole thing. And I'm going to put in the offset function manually equals offset. Open up the parenthesis. So the upper left corner, that's going to remain the same. So I'm going to make that the column header there in column A. Comma, so I'm putting a comma right there into the formula. So how many rows down? We're going to start like that. Comma, columns across is that. Comma, the height. We're going to start six rows up there. Comma, the width, two columns right there. 
So we're done with that formula, and now I'm going to close the parenthesis. So it seems pretty complicated. Hit the close button. says, do I want to save changes to the name reference? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click yes. Okay, so nothing much has happened. Now I'm just going to go back into the print dialog box, press Control p and there is what we had before. Escape out. But here's where it gets really cool. So that height, that's six rows, and you can see that there. What if I make that eight, just hit the tab key, you notice it expanded two rows, and let's say now I want four columns instead of two, so I'm going to make that four. You can see that line has gone two columns across. Let's go back to the print dialog box, and yeah, there it is. It works. Let's change it again. This is so cool. I love this. So maybe instead of eight rows, I'm going to make it 10 rows, and instead of four columns, I want that as five columns, and you can see that line has changed. And I can go up there and you see that's changed. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. By the way, the number of rows down and columns across you put in the function can be negative numbers. Negative rows means move upward and negative columns means move to the left. Excel's official documentation says this isn't supported, but it works just fine. Anyway, you can say offset is a lookup function, but you see this works a little differently from xlookup. Of course, you can always nest offset inside xlookup. Good luck with that. If you have your own use for offset you'd like to share, leave a comment below. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.